The first step in our work process is file management in workspaces. Step one is to create a project folder for this project to put all your files in. You can do that by either creating a project folder on the desktop, as you can see here, which I've opened in this area. Or you can also create a project folder in the Creative Cloud files, which you can see in this window. Next step is to name that project folder, uh, which I did. I named this one FDI Premiere. And then to add all of our media files into this project folder. As you can see here, I have two A-roll files in the project, one audio file, two, uh, one B-roll file, and two images in the file. You can use these files, these sample files in our workflow or use your own files as you go. But the goal again is to put everything into the same project folder so that we know where all of our media files are and media assets are when we begin production. With our files in place, we're going to launch Premiere Pro. We're gonna do that by clicking the I, uh, Creative Cloud icon at the top of the window, the top of the display. Go to the video and motion category and click open. Program, so it will take a little while for it to fully load. I'm going to speed that up in our process. Now, once Premiere Pro launches, we're going to create a new project by clicking the New Project button. And that will launch the New Project dialog box. Here, we're going to give our project a name. I'm going to call this one Concept Video 1. And then I'm going to set the location for where I want the project to be saved. And again, we're going to put everything in that same folder. So I'm going to click Browse to open up the Browse menu. I'm going to go to the desktop, which is where I'm putting all my files, FDI Premiere, select that, click Choose, and then click OK. And this will launch us into the default workspace for Premiere Pro. You can move between different work workspace settings by clicking the menu elements at the top. Some of them load quicker than others, depending on their settings. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to start in assembly. And we are going to begin by getting rid of some of the panels we don't need. So we're going to close a few panels. Um, we have panes and panels. This is the project pane, the monitor pane, the timeline pane. And we're going to close a few of the panels inside the project pane. So click the media browser panel. Click the three little, uh, lines icon or the hamburger icon. And click close panel. And we're going to repeat that process to close the markers panel, the audio clip mixer panel, and the libraries panel. Next, we're going to move our window panes around for, to maximize our workspace or to better improve our workflow. And we're going to do that by moving the project pane to just to the left of the monitor pane. You're going to click and drag to the left until that purple indicator shows up. And let me do that again. You can see when we drag the mouse over, it gives us different locations to place the pane, but we want it on the left where we're at and that gives us the space to work with. Next, we're gonna add a few panels back to the project window pane. And we're gonna do that by clicking the project pane, going to window and scrolling down to effect controls. And we're gonna repeat that process with effects, giving us project panel, effects controls panel and effects panel in the project pane. The last move, the next move we're going to do is to resize our windows to make, our, make better use of our space. So we're going to Hover between the monitor pane and the project pane until we get the double arrows. And we're going to click and drag to the left, giving more space for the monitor pane. This is, will be where we can see our video. And then we're going to resize the timeline, uh, stretching it to the right. We want to make our timeline as long as possible so we can see as much of the project unfold as we are working on it. The last step in this process is to save our new workspace. So we're going to go to Workspaces, win or go to Window, go to Workspaces. And then the submenu, click Save as New Workspace. In that dialog box, we're going to call this FDI Workspace. You can call it whatever you'd like. And click OK. And then it should appear up here now as one of our workspace options. And this is important because if we unintentionally make mistakes with the workplace, maybe we close this program panel and we undock this one and we're not sure what to do, we can always reset it uh, back to that default that we just saved. So we can go, always go to Window, Workspaces, and go down to... Uh, reset to save layout and it will put everything back into its proper location. Step two is importing clips, media, and assets. To do this, we're going to select the project pane. We're going to go to file, scroll down to import, and then it, that'll launch the import menu. And then we're going to make sure we find the correct file. In this case, it's on our desktop. I'm going to open that up and then we're going to select the files that we want to bring into the project by clicking the file and clicking import. 
Alternately, we can batch import them all by highlighting them, holding the command key on the Mac and clicking, or control click uh, on the PC, and then click import. Once the files are in, you can see that they are color coded based on media type. So images are pink, uh, videos are blue, audio file is green. We can also toggle the file display from the list view to the icon view um, and to the freeform view. A helpful tip under the icon view is that you can scrub or preview the clip in the actual window. And so it'll give you a chance to, to look at what's being played. Last step uh, for part two here is now that we have some project files into the project, we want to go ahead and save this project. I'm gonna go back to list view because that's the view I prefer. And I'm gonna go up to file, scroll down to save and click save. Alternately, you can hit command S or control S if you're on a PC, command S if you're on a Mac. Um, and it's a good habit to get into to save your workflow and your process regularly. For step three, we're going to create a sequence. To do this, we are going to click on the A Roll 1 video file in the project panel. You can see, click here, project panel, click on the A Roll 1 video file, and just drag it into the timeline. This will create a new sequence, renaming or naming that sequence A Roll 1. Now, that is the same name as our video file, so to avoid any confusion, we want to rename the A Roll 1 sequence. So I'm going to right click on the sequence in the project panel. Scroll down to rename, click rename, and then give this a new name. I'm going to call mine sequence one, and then when I'm done, I'm just going to click in the project panel, and we will have a new sequence in the project timeline. In step four, we're going to show you three different ways to trim or cut or edit a clip. To start with, though, I want to clean my timeline space so we have a clean slate to work with. So I'm going to just click on the a roll one video that we drug into the timeline previously and click delete. Next, I want to start with way number one, which is setting the mark in and mark out point on a source video. And to do that, we're going to go to A roll one, because that's the video we're going to work with on the project panel. So click project panel, click A roll one, and then our double click A roll one to open it in the source panel. You can see it'll show up over here in the source panel in, in the monitor pane. Um, and next, we want to set our mark in and mark out point. If you have seen this video, You'll know there's a bit of a, um, I can play it through here, but you'll know there's a bit of a filler, lead in, lead out, as uh, we set up to start the recording. But I want to set the mark in and mark out point, which for me is at the 10 seconds and 10 frames mark. Now I can play it to get to that point by hitting the play button. I can also use the space bar to toggle play on and off. Um, or I can just scroll or scrub by grabbing the playhead and dragging it to where I want it. I'll get it pretty close and then I'll use the arrow keys left and right to just move it back to the exact frame mark, 10 seconds and 10 frames. Then I'm going to click the mark in tool to set the mark in point. And now you can see the change has occurred. And then I want to set the mark out point, which for me in this video is at two minutes and 21 seconds and 11 frames. So I'm just gonna scroll ahead. You can obviously, the more you watch these things, you'll typically find these things by listening to them, playing them back, and viewing them. But I've already set the mark in out points on this, so I know exactly where I'm going. Um, so 2.21.11, so I get that close, I'm just gonna arrow on over to get to the 20, oh, 2.21.11. There we go, got that set, and click the mark out point. And now you can see the source video, which is what we are, has eliminated the excess things off the end. So now we can grab a roll one over here, and drag it into our timeline on video channel one. And it will only bring in the elements that, the source elements that we have just set. Okay, so step two in the, uh, or sorry, part two in the step uh, step four process here, the second cut, or second edit method is to cut and delete, or in this case, cut and ripple delete. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use the selection tool and the razor tool to insert two cuts into our A roll clip down here, and then delete that middle piece. If you can see um, in, in the timeline, you can see there's a bit of a gap here in the audio file. And that's because in the middle of this clip, there was an interruption. Uh, somebody, I thought somebody was knocking on the door when this recording was taking place. So I wanna just remove that interruption from the video. And I'm gonna zoom in so we can see this a little bit better by adjusting the sliders and the uh, zoom features. Next, I'm going to click on the selection tool. I'm gonna move the playhead to the, just the beginning of this interruption, which is actually right about here. 
Um, it's actually 10104 in my timeline to be exact. So I'm going to just tab that over. I scrubbed it close to get it close when the interruption begins. 10104. Okay. And now I'm going to insert my first cut. I have the playhead at one minute, one second, and four frames. I'm going to click on the razor tool in the tool, uh, the tool panel. I'm going to drag the razor tool over top of the clip in the timeline to the playhead and click to cut. And you can see now that it has inserted a cut. Now I'll go back to the, the arrow tool just to be safe. Now I'm going to go to, the, to where I need the next cut, which is at the end of this interruption, which is 1 minute, 12 seconds, and 21 frames. So I'm pretty close. I'm just going to use the arrow key to tab over to my frame total. And you can see that frame total occurring up here, um, the timeline marker, I should say. Once you have the playhead in place, you're going to go back to the razor tool, again, over top of the playhead, and click Cut. And you can see now we have three independent segments of what was once one total clip. But I want to get rid of this clip in the middle, the segment in the middle, so I can click it and hit Delete, and then select this clip and drag it. Alternately, we can do what's called a Ripple Delete, which is more effective if you have lots of elements on your timeline. So we're going to just click the middle segment, and go to uh, Edit, and scroll down to Ripple Delete. And that'll automatically pull all the media elements together. You can do this as well with hotkeys on a Mac. For example, you can use um, Alt-Delete or Option-Delete on a Mac, or I believe it's Shift-Delete on a PC, and it will uh, also create, this, create the same effect. And that brings us to our third approach to uh, cut it cutting, editing, trimming, and manipulating uh, video clips. Uh, and that is the click and drag method. So with the selection tool um, selected, we're going to move the playhead to the end here. If you've seen the video through, you'll know there's a, the conclusion isn't as, as good as it could be. In A-Roll 2 up here, this file is a retake of that conclusion. So what I want to do is to trim the video back to, so that the conclusion in A-Roll 1 is no longer present and eventually put A-Roll 2 in its place. But to, for this step, we're just going to click and drag to adjust the duration of a roll one, the second segment of a roll one. Um, and we want to move the playhead to the one minute and 45 second mark, because that's where the, the conclusion begins. And I got it pretty close, as you can see. So I'm just going to use the arrow key again to get me to exactly to the, one, whoop, to the 145 mark. And then and now we're going to use the selection tool again mouse over the edge of the clip until you get the red bracket, click and drag it back to the playhead. And that will eliminate that ending element. And so what we've just done is demonstrated three ways of cutting, editing, or trimming a clip, manipulating a video clip in the timeline or in the source video. In step five, we're going to learn to build both vertically and horizontally. But to begin, we want to familiarize ourselves with the timeline in a little more depth. The timeline, as uh, you may have seen is, uh, so far, involves sliders, which are these little elements here, where you, on the timeline itself, the one at the bottom allows you to scroll forward and back chronologically across time. If you click the little circle and drag, you can zoom in and zoom out on the timeline, getting closer or further away from, from the timeline elements. On the right, we have sliders for both the video channels and the audio channels. Now, as Adobe Premiere Pro organizes things into different channels. You can have as many video channels as, as your machine can process, uh, but just note that the higher the number of the video channel, um, the, the higher order items show over top of the lower order items. So if this is video channel one, which it is, and all of our A-roll footage is on video channel one, anything we put on video channel two then will show over top of video channel one. Now that said, we want to start building horizontally uh, as, you, as I mentioned in the previous step, we took out the conclusion from the original A1 uh, audio or A1 video file. And so we're going to replace that conclusion with the conclusion in A-Roll 2. And so we're going to again do the uh, mark in, mark out editing technique to set the in and out points um, because it has a lot of lead in and lead out elements we want to just get rid of. And so the lead in mark, or the mark in point for A-Roll 2 for my video is at the 18 seconds and 5 frames mark. So I'm just going to scroll to 18.05. As usual, get it close and then just use the arrow keys to, to get the rest of the way. Set the mark in point. And then the mark out point here 
as the video ends is at 45 seconds and 10 frames and so I'm just going to again get it close by scrolling to the, where my mark is. I've already previewed this. If you haven't previewed your video clips or you don't know where they are, you know this is the point where you'd watch them back in real time and then set the, the, the marker points. Okay, got 45.10 and I'll click the mark out. And now my source video is set. And I'm going to then go back to the project pane, click on the A-Roll 2 video clip and drag it into the project pane to the right of A-Roll 1, the second segment of A-Roll 1. So now you can see I have three segments a roll one and a roll a roll one segment one a roll one segment two and a roll two and that's sort of how we continue to build out horizontally or chronologically allowing things to unfold over time but if we watch this back you can see what, where these cuts are there's a jump so there's a bit of a jump in the video so what we want to do is start to build vertically in order to hide that jump to make the video uh, viewing experience a bit smoother and so we're going to do that by using b-roll uh, footage uh, and so you can see i have the b-roll one uh, vi uh, video clip up here we're going to click b-roll one in the project panel drag it down to the timeline over top of the cut like that just to hide it um, and you'll notice the b-roll one also has this edit um, credits at the end and so i'm going to go ahead and cut those off so back right there at exactly where they begin. Go to the eraser tool again using the cut and delete method over top of the B-roll one at the playhead. Clip, click it to, to insert the cut and then choose the additional segment and press the delete key. I'm also gonna move the B-roll a little bit onto the timeline to just to make sure it's completely over top of the, the cut there. So now if we see this and back in real time, So it, it jumps from the A-roll talking head video to the B-roll. Uh, but as you notice, the B-roll also has uh, some audio that we have to delete. So what I want to do to accomplish that, because that, that audio doesn't really fit what I'm going for, and it's really loud. So I'm going to first lock video channel 2, which you can see over here, this little lock icon. Once it's locked, I can then select the audio file on audio channel 2 that's attached to B-roll 1, and then I can press the delete key. Um, but, and because video channel 2 is locked, it won't delete the video, but it will delete the audio. And then once that's completed, I can unlock the video channel 2. And you can see now, let's see if we can watch this. Okay, so it sort of shifts into that process. Um, we want to additionally do something to hide this last cut here, the 145 mark where we the A-Roll 1 and A-Roll 2 combine. And to do that, we're going to use the two images. We're going to select image 1 and image 2. We can hold the command key to, again, to select them both, drag them down into the timeline, and place the cut mark. Place the, sorry, I should say, place the line between the two videos directly above the cut line and the segment line between A-Roll 1 and A-Roll 2. And that will create, essentially, a seamless transition for us, or nearly seamless transition for us. And that concludes Step five. Step six is about audio adjustments and effects. And essentially what we're going to do in step six is to add a background audio element to this video production. Uh, to do that, we're going to select the audio one file in the project panel. So click on audio one, and we're gonna drag it down into audio channel two. And we'll place it at the beginning of the timeline. And now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see that this audio file is, is really long compared to the video file. So what I want to do uh, first and foremost is to adjust it to fit the video. So I'm going to select the clip using the selection tool. I'm going to mouse over the end and again using um, way number three in our step four, right? Uh, the click and drag method. We're going to just mouse over to get the red bracket, click and drag it back until it lines up with the end of the audio or the video clip. Um, but if we listen to this clip back, the the audio is a little bit loud. So I want to pull the volume down just a little bit, three to four decibels, that kind of thing. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're working with. Right. And you can see in this audio channel, there is a white volume line, the rest of here. If you don't have this open, if your menu looks like this, you can um, always double click on A2 here to open up the audio channel interface a little bit, make it a little wider. And there's a white line that runs through the clip. If we just click this clip and drag it down, it will lower the volume. So I want to do about 3.3 decibels. 
and now we can listen back. Maybe I need a little bit further, just a little loud. Go down to four. That sounds pretty good. Uh, sometimes we may have to, if you can't adjust this volume all, down far enough, it only goes down so far, you may have to adjust the audio from the A roll up as well. And it's the same thing. You click the line and just drag up or down to up increases the volume, down decreases the volume. Step seven involves video adjustments and effects. And for our purposes today, we're going to just create a close-up shot in the video sequence. And to do that, we're going to insert a cut into A-Roll 1, Segment 1, and manipulate the scale of the new segment that's created. So we're going to start by finding our cut in point, where we're going to create the first zoom in effect, or the first zoom or close-up effect, I should say. And for me, that's going to be at the 27 second and 10 frame mark. Right about there, getting out of the timeline timestamp to get it exact. Uh, and I'm going to insert a cut at that marker. And what this does, this creates a new segment, as you can see right here, a segment that goes underneath the B roll element. Uh, a roll one, segment two, and it feeds into the B roll in terms of the visual experience you can see sort of unfolding there. All right, now with the A roll one, segment two selected, I'm going to go to the effect controls. And for most of you, it'll probably start like this with the, the motion line here, having the arrow being close. We're going to open up the motion menu, and then we're going to click Scale. And you can see it puts a bounding box around the video. Let me shrink this down so you can see what we're looking at. Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can adjust scale to create this close-up effect. You can click the number 100 and just drag to the right and adjust the scale. You can click the actual number as well and, and just type into the box, maybe I want it to be 200, right? Additionally, maybe if it's smaller, you can click the bounding box and just drag to create the size effect that you want. But you'll notice if you get to 200, now the talking head in this case is off screen. So I also need to adjust the position. And so I'm gonna click the position line and I can use the X and Y axes again to adjust manually or just type in the values or I can click on the bounding box on the screen and then just move the talking head into the into the picture the way that I want it. Okay. Um, and that creates a, essentially a close-up shot through a post-production process. And if you see here, we can watch back. So we have that shift from the mid shot to the to the close-up. Step eight involves adding basic transition effects two elements in our timeline. And to do this, we're going to add a cross dissolve transition effect to our B-roll and images, and a dip to black to the beginning of A-roll one and to the end of A-roll two. Um, and we use transitions to help create a more seamless ex viewing experience. And so if you see the timeline here, right, we just jump from A-roll to B-roll. So we want to have that kind of slowly um, dissolve in. And to do that, we're going to select B-roll one, and then in the project pane, we're going to go to effects, under effects, we're going to open up video transitions, then open up dissolve, and click cross dissolve and drag it to the front of the B-roll clip. And you can see it should have added it to the front of B-roll one. Uh, we're going to click and drag it to the end as well, and that'll create a cr cross dissolve effect. Right. So you can see it slowly, B-roll one slowly dissolve in. I want to create the same element onto a, uh, images so that I have the same kind of visual uh, appeal. And to do that, I can again click cross dissolve and drag it to the front, to between, and to the end of the two clips. Or I can select them both by holding the command key, sorry, shift key, and selecting them both. Um, and with them both selected, I can use the quick keys and hit command D to add the default transition to these uh, elements. It's command D on a Mac and then control D on a PC. Um, and the default transition at this point is cross dissolve. I believe you can change that, but for now that's where we are. And so that creates this same effect where the images fade in or transition in and transition out. Um, additionally, uh, I want to add a, a, a dip to black at the beginning of A-Roll 1 because right now the video just sort of starts, right? So a little bit of a dip to black at the beginning will help bring it in from the black screen. Um, and then at the end, same thing, I'm going to grab dip to black and drag it to the end of A-Roll 2 so that it fades out to black. 
and that's essentially our process of adding transitions. The transitions help create a bit of a visual smoothness or seamlessness as we move from one element to the next. In step nine, making titles and transitions, we're going to add black video to the project um, and then put it into the project timeline to create space to add a title. We'll add a title to over top of the black video and edit that title. And then we will manipulate keyframes in the audio file, audio background file, to create an audio intro and outro effect. But to start, we're going to add the black video to our project pane in order to create space in our timeline. So we're going to go to File, go to New, and scroll down to Black Video. And that will open up the new Black Video dialog box. We want it to match our current sequence setting, so click OK. Um, and then it puts Black Video into the project panel. Next, we need to create space to import the video. The black video is roughly five seconds long, so we need to create some space for that. To do that, we're going to use the Track Selection Forward tool, which is here. Click Track Selection Forward tool, and then click anywhere on the timeline. It'll auto-select all the elements in your timeline, and then just click and push to create space. I can drag it out 15 seconds just to make sure I have enough space. And then I'm going to go back to the black video, click and drag it down into the timeline right at the beginning on video channel one. And now I can click with all my elements still selected, again, still using the track selection tool, track selection forward tool, click and drag it, all those elements back into place. Now that I have space uh, at the beginning, I can add a title element over top of the black video. And to do that, I want to click the text tool, or the type tool. And once I have the type tool selected, I'm going to go to the monitor pane. Let me make this bigger so we can see what we're doing. And click anywhere you want to put the title and just type in the title of your project. Let's call this Post Digital. Um, and once I have the text in there, I can then edit that text using a text editor. I'm going to highlight all the text. I'm going to go to Effect Controls and you'll see the text editor control line that comes in. Click the down arrow and this opens up your text editor interface. Um, maybe you don't like the font, so you might change it to something else, maybe not worthy. Um, once you have your font selected, you can then go back to the selection tool and you can click and reposition it on the screen as you see fit. You can also just manually resize by clicking and dragging the box. And so there's our title effect. I hit enter to allow it to go, to take its place. Um, but at this point, the title just sort of starts there and then just disappears. So I, I want to add a transition effect to the title sequence, a title element as well. And to do that again, I'm going to go to the effects panel. Under video transitions, under dissolve, click cross dissolve and drag it to the beginning and ending of the clip so that the title fades in and fades out. So I have a black video and a title sequence that then leads into my video, but my audio doesn't start at the beginning of the project. So I want to now create an audio intro and outro effect. And to do that, I'm gonna first click on the audio file, again using the selection tool, click, and move it to the beginning of the timeline. Next, I want to drag the audio clip so that it's beyond the end of our timeline, and I'm gonna click the end here, with the mouse to the end to get the bracket. Click and drag it till it's several seconds past the, uh, the, the project, about five seconds or so past the end of the project. And now I have my audio timeline that runs from the beginning of the black video beyond the end of the video itself. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, adjust the slider so we can see what's going on the audio channel. Because we're gonna manipulate the audio channel here in audio channel two. And again, so if you don't have this one open, you just double click on the audio channel two line next to here in the gray and it'll open up the add and remove keyframes interface. So to start, we're gonna add we're gonna add five keyframes to this project to create our audio intro and outro effect. With the playhead all the way at the beginning and the audio file selected, we want to click the add remove keyframe button to put one keyframe in the title. Next, we're gonna move the playhead to just to where the audio starts from audio one. And you can, you can see that right there. Okay. And we're gonna add a second keyframe. And so this gives us two points to work with. And now I can click the first keyframe, you can see how the mouse changes there. Click and drag it up about seven to eight decibels. So that's keyframe one and two. Now we wanna add keyframes three, four, and five. And we're gonna do this by adding a keyframe three just a few seconds before the end of the, the clip. A couple seconds beforehand. Add a key, again, move your playhead to where you want it. Click the Add, Remove Keyframe button to insert your third keyframe. Move to just a second beyond the end or so, and then add your fourth keyframe. 
and then move all the way to the end of the clip and add your fifth keyframe. Now with these selected, we want to take the fourth one, click and push it up again about eight decibels, seven and a half to eight, and then click and drag the fifth keyframe all the way down. And what this will do is it'll create our audio, will be playing below our, our voiceover, or our talking head voice, and then as that ends, it'll, the audio will come up and then fade out. As a last element here, um, I believe we have to add credits into our workflow, which is part of our titling sequence. So we're gonna do that real quick here at the end. Put the title where we want it, click the text tool, and type in audio from binsound.com video from pexels.com and then I'm just going to move them into the center here so we can see them again. So now we have as our video plays out and I want to add a cross dissolve to those as well. So with it selected, I'm going to hit command D, again, if you're on a PC, hit control D and it will auto cross dissolve in and cross dissolve out. And that concludes the bulk of our video process. Step 10, our final step in this process, is saving and sharing sequences. And we're going to do that by exporting our sequence and turning it into a video file that we can share with others that's playable in a variety of forms. So to start, we're going to go to the project panel in the project pane. We're going to select sequence 1 to make sure that we have the correct sequence element identified. And then we're going to go to File and scroll down to Export and click Media. And this will open the Export Settings dialog box. And here we want to make sure we choose things uh, that are important to the overall output. So we're going to select our format um, and choose a H.264. It's a widely recognized format. It's playable in a lot of different for, uh, media types. Um, additionally, we're going to change the name. So where it says output name, we're going to click output name, and that will open up the Save As dialog box. Um, here, again, we're going to go to the desktop, choose the file where we're saving all of our media, and, and name it, uh, give it a new name, a unique name, Post Digital sample. That's what I'll call this one. Uh, once we have our name set and our location set, we're going to click Save. And then as a last step, we just click Export at the bottom here, and that will begin the export sequence. And then it will take just a few minutes, uh, a few seconds for it to render out. The length of the export itself depend, is dependent on the kind of manipulations you've added to the file, as well as the processing speed and capabilities of your machine.